Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for students for, at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In our previous two lectures in this series, lectures 26 and 27, we've talked a lot about factoring large degree polynomials uh, so we can find the real roots, which then help us solve polynomial equations. What I want to do is continue in that vein, but in this, in this lecture, I want to talk about complex roots. So what if we want to consider real roots and non-real roots? Uh, so what if we allow for some imaginary component here? And this kind of helps complete the picture. And so this leads to what is commonly referred to as the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, in mathematics, whenever we give a theorem a name, it's because we want to reference it in the future. Like, so we could talk about theorem 4, 5, 22, right? But, you know, no, if I'm like, oh, Oh, you remember for theorem 4, 5, 22? No one's going to remember what that number means, right? So we give things names so we can talk about them. And so you'll see things like, oh, the conjugate pair theorem. We can talk about that. So theorems often give names when we want to remember them. And so whenever a theorem is named in this series, you watching it should know it by name so we could reference it in the future. Now, whenever the adjective fundamental is added in front of the word theorem, this means it's a big deal. We don't, add, we don't add the term fundamental just loosely. There's very few theorems in mathematics that are deserving of the title fundamental. Fundamental theorem of algebra is one of these things. It's a pretty big deal here. And so what the fundamental theorem of algebra actually tells us is that every complex polynomial, F, has a degree N, which it's greater than equal to 1, so it's not a constant polynomial. Every complex po polynomial has at least a complex root. This is the thing is not every polynomial has a root. Uh, it, it, well, it depends on the context of numbers you're talking about. Like if you take the polynomial x squared plus 1, this polynomial has no integer root. It has no rational root. It has no real root. But it does have a complex root. Specifically, it's going to be plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which we call i. And so the thing about so important about complex numbers is that there's never going to be a polynomial we can come up with which cannot be solved over the complex number system. Worst case scenario, we need to use real and imaginary numbers to describe the solution. That's what the fundamental theorem of, calcul or fundamental theorem of algebra tells us. We never have to have a bigger number system than the complex numbers when we're working with polynomials. And then some consequences of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Every complex polynomial function, f, of degree n greater than or equal to 1 can be factored into n linear factors. Uh, and these factors don't necessarily have to be distinct. They could be repeated. So every polynomial will look like f of x is a to the n times x minus the first root times x minus the second root times x minus the third root all the way down to x minus the nth root. You always have this linear factorization. Now, some of the factors could be repeated. And the roots, r1, r2, these could be complex numbers which be aware that real numbers are complex numbers. It's not an either or type of thing. It's not like, oh, a number is either real or imaginary. Um, real numbers are complex numbers, just like trees are plants, although not every plant is a tree. The, 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 the complex numbers is a broader number system here. And so if you count the multiplicities of the roots, you will always have n roots when you're working over the complex number system. Now, our goal is most to be focusing on real polynomials. We could talk about polynomials with complex coefficients. We're not really going to be interested in that. We're interested in real polynomials. But the roots of real polynomials could be complex numbers. But what we do know is that if a real polynomial, its coefficients are real numbers, if non-real uh, non roots show up, they're always going to come up in conjugate pairs. So if a plus bi is a root of a real polynomial, then a minus bi will also be a root. So once you find one complex root, you also get its conjugate. They always come as a package deal. So for example, suppose uh, a polynomial f of degree 5, whose coefficients are real, has roots 1, 5i, and 1 plus i. What are the two remaining roots? Well, uh, so if we're building this polynomial f of x here, we don't have enough information to determine the leading coefficient. But since x is a root, uh, since 1 is a root, excuse me, we get x minus 1 as a root. Uh, because x minus, uh, since 5i is a root, you also get that, uh, you're going to get x minus 5 as a factor. But because 5i is a root, that means its conjugate is also going to be a root. The other conjugate is going to be negative 5i, which tells us that x plus 5i is a root. And then if 1 plus i is a root, then that means x minus 1 plus i is a factor. But then the other root necessarily has to be its conjugate, 1 minus i, which we're going to get x minus 1 minus i as a root right here. 
And so this gives us the polynomial that is necessarily in play right here. And you might wonder, this is really a real value polynomial? Let's convince ourselves of that. If you take these conjugate pairs, foil them out. If you take, if you take x minus 5i and you times that by x plus 5i, you'll notice when you foil, you're going to get an x squared. You're going to get a 5ix minus 5ix. And then you're going to get a negative 25i squared. Notice how this simplifies. You're going to get 5ix minus 5x. They cancel each other. And remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this turns out to be x squared plus 25. All right. And so that's pretty nifty right there. If you were to write f of x again, you're going to get some coefficient a. We don't know what it is yet. x minus a, x minus 1. Then you're going to get x squared plus 25. Oh, those are real coefficients. What about the other part? What about the x minus 1 plus i and the x minus 1 minus i? We're going to see the same thing happens if we FOIL those things out too. If we take x minus 1 plus i and we take x minus 1 minus i. Notice we are subtracting the roots, but we're only switching the signs here on the, on the imaginary parts. If we multiply these things out, we're going to get an x squared. We're going to get a minus 1 minus i x. We're going to get a minus 1 plus i x. And then you're going to get a positive 1 plus i times 1 minus i, like so. And so how do things combine this time? So you'll notice there's a negative i x and a positive i x. We're subtracting them. Uh, those things are going to cancel out, but the real part doesn't cancel out. You end up with an x squared. You're going to get a negative 1x and a negative 1x. They actually combine to give you a negative 2x. And what about these right here? If you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you're always going to get a sum of squares. This thing is going to turn out to be 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is just a 2. So that thing foils out to just to be x squared minus 2x plus 2. And so if we put that above here, x squared minus 2x plus 2, you'll now notice that this polynomial, it's not all the way multiplied out yet, but now it's a product of three real value, number, uh, real value polynomials. If I were to continue with it, then we can see this is going to be a real value polynomial. The complex conjugates basically interact with it in such a way that the imaginary parts will cancel out. And that's why they come in conjugate pairs. Uh, as another example, suppose we want to find a polynomial of degree 4 whose coefficients are, again, real, and we want the roots to be 1, 1, and negative 4 plus i. So there's a repeated root. So what can we say about our polynomial? We don't have enough information for its leading coefficient, so we'll just say it's a for the moment. And because 1 is a repeated root, we're going to get x minus 1 squared. We're going to get x minus a negative 4 plus i. But then the other root has to be the conjugate, which is negative 4 minus i. So then the other one's going to be x minus negative 4 minus i. And so we could FOIL it out to see what it is. If you don't want to FOIL it out, I want to mention another trick. If x equals negative 4 plus i, then let's do the following. X plus, this would mean that x plus 4 equals i. If we square both sides, well, you're going to have to FOIL at the left-hand side. You're going to get an x squared plus 8x plus 16. This is equal to negative 1. And therefore, if you add 1 to both sides, you get x squared plus 8x plus 17. 17 equals 0. So if negative 4 plus i is a root, the smallest polynomial that has that as a root is this quadratic right here. That's going to be the product of these two things right here. That kind of gives an alternative if you didn't want to FOIL out all of this stuff right here. You can kind of avoid the arithmetic with complex numbers. And so our polynomial looks like a times x minus 1 squared times x squared plus 8x plus 17, which we could FOIL that thing out a little bit farther if we wanted to. I don't really care to do that right now. Uh, I mean, you can, of course, like x squared minus 1. Uh, that, would, that would FOIL out to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. And if you FOIL this by that, uh, you end up with the following. Again, I'm just going to put out the details. I'm not going to do all of them, though. This would simplify to be x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 2x squared minus 26x plus 17. I'm looking off my cheat sheet right now. I didn't do all of my head. Uh, but you, you can multiply that out and get that. But the point is, at this stage, you could see that the coefficients were real, that the complex conjugates, the pairs, uh, they're going to cancel out their imaginary parts, and you're going to get real polynomials. So real polynomials will always come in these conjugate pairs. That's an important observation to make here.